we have a, a gentleman in our Facebook group named Jim, and Jim does a lot of his own market timing. He's been involved with markets for quite some time. Jim, I don't know if you're in here tonight, but how long have you been trading if you are? Uh, if not, I can tell you he's been trading a lot longer than I have. And he's got his own way of timing the market. And I noticed that he does get out a little early here and there, and that's okay. And, and that's a whipsaw, and that's kind of frustrating. But like Greg Moore says, and we're going to, spoiler alert, we'll get to this in just one second. A bear market is devastating. You could survive frustration, right? So anyway, one thing to watch for is hourly turns. Now, you don't want to rush out and, and sell the form, but you might have it appraised when you get an hourly signal. And there's other signals that we're watching, but an hourly signal can give you a bit of a heads up. So I just went in and grabbed oh, I don't know, a couple of months of the P's, and I put in bow tie proper order. This is my plug-in through stockcharts.com, which by the way, is free. Free for now, I might eventually charge for it. I need to talk to the owner and see what he says and see how he feels about it, but for now, it's um, it's free. Anyway, you can see down here, we had lots of green and some yellow here and there, but mostly green. And green just simply means that the 10 simple is greater than a 20 exponential, and the 20 exponential is greater than the 30. So 10 greater than 20 greater than 30. And you can see we had a decent trend on the hourly chart for, for quite a while. So that's pretty cool. And then it turned red. And then as you can see, we did have the rollover. And I'll show you exactly when it turned red in just one second. We had a little green during that retrace rally back up. It didn't last that long. And then what happened? Well. It went back to red and the market rolled back over. Now, if we go back to the slide that began this year, that began on 1-4. And we got an hourly bow tie down just one day later. So, the point I'm trying to make here is it does pay to pay attention. And what I was hoping for, I know, hope, the reason this whole research started this morning was I got to thinking about, I, I was looking at Facebook posts and I noticed that Jim had exited his stuff a while back and was completely flat. And it got me thinking, okay, well, when is the turn up going to happen? And so I started looking for an hourly turn up and we might be a long ways away from that, especially with today's action. But I think it's good to give you a little heads up. Let's start watching for that hourly turn up. And, and if I forget, somebody in Facebook remind me and let me know when we've got that hourly turn up so we can take a look at it. But you can see 1.5 again, we we got the, the flip over and the moving averages. And nothing magical about anything I do, nothing magical about moving averages. But all this stuff can help to keep you on the right side of the market. And basically, that's what we're doing is we're trying to stay on the right side of the market. And as I'll probably reiterate in a few minutes, when it comes to market timing, some is better than none. So you don't lose half of your retirement, right? Anyway, we went, we went green for a little while in here. But here's what's interesting, okay? And this is why I'm not a mechanical trader. And this is why I don't blindly follow things, although I do have some things that you could take and make mechanical but i prefer to use both sides of my brain and take a look at what's actually happening in the market so you can see sideways action in here so i wouldn't have gotten too too excited about that turnover maybe pay attention to the market maybe pay attention to the the, the highest level since the turn and see if that gets taken out before getting too excited and also draw your arrows. So you can see we kind of had a sideways movement. And then we went back to being red. And we've been red for a long, long time. But this is going, we did have a little green in between like I just showed you. But I just wanted to go back to the top of the market and showed you what's happening on hourly. Now remember, the hourly is going to turn long before the daily ever will. And then the weekly is going to take a while to turn after the daily turns. Although the TFM 10% system did trigger which is based on a weekly chart did trigger before the daily which i thought was really cool way back when the pandemic hit in earnest or when the market took it seriously at least 
So here's the 1422 top, as you can see. And you can see we've had some big counter rallies in between. And I'm sure we had plenty of hourly bow ties turn up in between. And you probably don't want to get too excited about the market unless you have an hourly turn up. Like we did back in July, I'm guessing. If we go back a couple of charts, you can see that. All right, any questions on the hourly or anything like that? Now, going further out, keeping with the fractal theme, if we go to a weekly, as I've been saying quite a bit, quoting Mr. Guyad and Baleo, they did a paper, and I think it's on the two-day moving average. I need to get around to reading it and finding it, but the gist of it, from what I understand, <laughs> Out of courtesy to them, I need to find it and read it. But anyway, out of courtesy, to, I, I think it's basically the, the premise is bad things happen below the 200. Well, that kind of dovetails in nicely with some market timing is better than none. So if you're below the 200-day moving average, if you're below the 10% buy line, if your bow ties have flipped over on a daily basis, hourly basis, weekly basis, you need to start thinking about maybe getting out of the way. So the whole premise was. Weakness begets more weakness. At least that's what I assume it is. But you can see that obviously we had the bear market 2008 and we had lots of downside bow tie or downside pro bow tie proper order, easy for me to say, on the weekly chart. Okay. And then it turned green, obviously. Then we had a little red again in late 2011. And even if you got out on some of those whipsaw signals, you could see that it did stay green or go back to green for a long, 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 long time. And I saw a while back, and, and I, I'll have to find the post, but it was a post that Greg Morris had, had written. And this was years ago, but the market had some gyrations, and it did go up longer term. And the, the, the point of their post was anyone who had, who had kept – pace with the market in the exact returns the market was up however many percent 30 percent or whatever period should be questioned if they just buy and held because that'll work until it don't and they weren't taking any evasive action and you know 2015 2016 as i often say even though the market didn't roll over that was a very ugly period and if memory serves i was mostly out of the market and getting chewed up here and there trying to get back in on both sides. Anyway, a little spill in 2019, and we did have one in 2020. Now, this is a bit of a misnomer because this weekly signal was actually late. We had such a big, deep V recovery. But I bet you a thousand bucks there was an hourly bow tie first, or a million bucks, because I know there was, just without even seeing the charts. They had to be to the downside. So there was an hourly bow tie, a daily bow tie, a weekly bow tie which was late, so scratch that. So hourly bow tie, daily bow tie. And then it was also a TFM 10% sell system right before the market began to sell off in earnest. Actually, it was a sell signal and then the market bounced around a couple of weeks and then it imploded. And that kind of dovetails into what I used to say about you have time, but not unlimited time to get out of the way. So obviously on a weekly basis, we're back to being red and we have been red for a long time. And we obviously have rolled over and we obviously are still in a bear market. 